amazing. Hello, everyone, again. Um, Professor Che. Hi. <laughs> it's really great to have you here. Um, can I call you uh, Dr. J? Yes. <laughs> amazing. Um, cool. So um, thanks again for sticking around. So uh, as I just alluded to uh, in the last talk, um, um, we wanted to have a, a conversation about regenerative finance. Uh, and we were really humbled and really grateful uh, for Dr. J uh, agreeing to join us today. Um, Dr. J is extremely accomplished um, uh, teaching at uh, Ehua University. Is that, uh, did I pronounce it correctly? Well, ish. Close. <laughs> uh, and previously at the uh, National Seoul University. Um, and, and before that, uh, Dr. J received his PhD from, uh, uni from Harvard University uh, in the US. And so once again, we're, we're really, really excited uh, to have him here today. Um, and maybe, um, yeah, just to start, uh, is it worth maybe sharing a little bit more about your background, uh, both um, as an educator, but then also in, in climate. Okay. <clears throat> to begin with, um, to, to be very honest, I don't know why I'm here at the moment. <laughs> um, I'm not really familiar with uh, what you guys do. I'm trying to understand listening to you and then previous speaker. Um, but believe it or not, um, I've been writing congratulatory remarks for, for uh, a number of books that's been published by the leading experts in, the, in this field in Korea. Um, but uh, let me uh, confess myself that I really don't quite understand the detailed physical mechanisms of uh, blockchain technology. So I came here to really learn what you guys do. But at the moment, um, I, I am also a leading uh, a group called the Biodiversity Foundation, which was founded by myself and the famous Jane Goodall. Jane Goodall is coming in about a month to Korea uh, on my invitation. Now, we, we are trying to mobilize people to save, uh, save the world from, from this uh, environmental degradation. But recently we were thinking, what if we could somehow you know, hold hands with these technology people? They seem to be doing something, something very interesting. Is there any way we can connect to each other? And that's why I'm here, I, to learn. And we're grateful to have you here. Um, and I think um, one of the topics that we wanted to, to, to talk about together is, is refi, uh, regenerative finance, uh, which is a topic that I think is still relatively new in the broader crypto space, but it's an exciting topic. Uh, and it's one that I think actually presents an opportunity for us to, um, as you said, uh, work together to, to tackle this, you know, really big and, and ambitious problem. Um, and so I guess yesterday was World Environment Day, uh, and I wonder if maybe that's a good um, um, reason to remind everyone, you know, why should we care? Why, why should we be thinking about climate change? Why should we um, be thinking about it even in, in the Web3 ecosystem? Well, the environment is is the one that envelope all of us, right? So environment collapses, we'll probably have to go with it anyway. Um, I'm glad to see all of you without, most of you without masks uh, right now, but we've been suffering for the, for the last three years um, because of uh, COVID-19. COVID-19, in my analysis, is the result of uh, environmental destruction caused by mainly climate change and biodiversity loss. Now, I am a uh, tropical biologist. I study animals in, in the tropical jungles all through my, all through my uh, career. 
And I know uh, for a fact that when you go to tropical jungles, you, you get to meet bats all the time. Uh, we described little more than uh, 1,400 species of bats in the world, but about 95% all live in tropical jungles. But in recent years, they've been moving into the uh, temperate regions because of climate change. The, the temperature in the, in the temperate region is, is going up. And so they find temperate region is livable as well. So they're moving into where we, we live. I'm not saying the uh, human species only lives in temperate region, but we are most uh, compact in, in temperate region anyway. What that means is the, the virus and bacteria that, uh, that bats carry around has much easier probability to come to us now. And that's probably why this thing happened this time. Biodiversity as well, we have to be, we have to be very concerned. Um, Homo sapiens, our species, has been here for more than uh, 250,000 years. But for the most part, mo mo almost 240,000 years, we were literally nothing. But in the past about 10,000 years, we've been cultivating, we've been doing agriculture, and that's how we became um, we became dominant species uh, on this planet. So during this COVID-19, we biologists got together and tried to calculate um, the importance of uh, Homo sapiens in this uh, Earth ecosystem. It was interesting when we calculated ecological dominance of uh, Homo sapiens about 10,000 years ago, we were less than 10% in terms of biomass. But now, at this time, if we calculate that again, um, Homo sapiens, biomass of Homo sapiens, and the biomass of all the animals we, we raise, compared to all the mammals and birds living on this planet at the moment, we comprise of nearly 99%. So we were only 10,000 years ago, we were less than 1%. Now we're nearly 99%. So if you are a virus or a bacteria living on the wild animals in the wood, chances are you will probably have to move because your life is getting miserable there. When you move, nearly 99% of time you will land on either Homo sapiens or Homo sapiens livestock. So what that means is just looking at prob probability, we're going to go through this kind of disasters more often, more and more, again and again. So environment is so important. It's, it's, it's a life and death situation for us. And if we can find some way to save it using, using blockchain technology, I'm not going to hesitate <laughs> to jump in. Yeah, wow. Um, I've never actually heard that before, that, that uh, pandemics now are, are going to be more, more frequent with, uh, with climate change. And certainly, I think we can all agree that wearing more masks um, is probably something that we want to avoid <laughs> going forward. Um, so, and, and you mentioned um, fighting this with blockchains, and, and of course, there's a, uh, a whole area now within Web3 that's formed this burgeoning field called ReFi. Who here has heard of the term ReFi before in the audience, just so that we can kind of get a sense of the crowd. So maybe about 20, 30 percent. Um, have you heard of the term? Well, yeah. I don't quite understand, but I heard. <laughs> yeah, so maybe just for the, for the rest of the folks in the audience. Um, so REFI stands for Regenerative Finance. 
Um, and, um, you know, many people have different definitions of it, but one definition that I like is uh, decentralized finance uh, where you have positive externalities baked into the protocol itself. Um, and so you can create these new types of financial systems uh, that can actually have a positive side effect uh, on climate change, on, on pollution, on ecological diversity, uh, even on community health. Um, the term is starting to become quite, quite broad. Um, increasingly, um, folks are talking about getting green-pilled, uh, which is, you know, when people get excited about this movement uh, and, and kind of start digging in. Uh, so hopefully we can all green-pill you a little bit today. Um, and um, the one reason why, why um, I'm up here uh, today is because Celo has, you know, almost by accident become kind of the home of, of ReFi. Um, you know, crypto has gotten, I think, historically a pretty bad rap when it comes to climate change, right? I think with proof-of-work networks, um, you know, they were very frequently um, using a lot of electricity that understandably made a lot of people skeptical about uh, the impact that they would have on, on climate change. Um, and so three years ago when the Celo network launched, uh, there was a governance proposal that passed in the ecosystem that committed to um, uh, or that um, made it so that the Celo network would programmatically buy carbon offset credits uh, and retire them using block rewards. Uh, and since then, the network has actually been fully carbon negative. Uh, already, it, it doesn't use much electricity because it's a proof of stake network. Uh, but on top of that, we wanted to really plant a, a stake in the ground show the world that, that crypto can actually be, um, have a positive effect on climate change. And since then, the protocol has, once again, you know, programmatically been buying carbon offset credits. Uh, and I think because of that fact, now a lot of these kind of new and exciting refi protocols have come to Celo, and so I have the, the, the um, joy of getting to, to learn about um, a lot of these um, and, um, and in many cases, you know, help them out a little bit. Uh, as they um, build out their protocols and, and think about the impact that they can have on the environment. Mm. Well, I, <clears throat> I, I know that you guys are trying to, trying hard to reduce the, uh, the, the consumption of electricity when you, when you create coins and whatnot, but that, that's a negative side. But <clears throat> I have a question about the positive side. Mm -hmm. How would you really, to someone like myself, how would you explain the blockchain technology could be could be helpful in in terms of um, stopping or slow slowing down the climate change or or even um, restoring our environmental ecosystem? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and I guess I would say um, it can help in, in two ways, perhaps. Uh, so the first way is around um, organizing uh, people to, to take on big and ambitious things. Uh, I think ultimately uh, fighting climate change, I think we as humanity know what we need to do, right? We know we have to lower emissions, um, and we know that if we do that quickly enough, we can, we can actually... Um, uh, avoid the catastrophic effects. The hard part is actually executing that plan. Um, and one of the amazing things about crypto is that it can be, it has historically been used to organize people to take on big and ambitious things. Um, one, you know, maybe entertaining example of this is the Constitution DAO, right? The fact that in one week a group of people could raise $47 million to try to buy a copy of the U.S. Constitution in one week. Um, that, to me, shows that uh, these types of networks uh, uh, can be really good at spurring action, incentivizing people to, to participate in something really big and ambitious uh, and, and do something pretty big and exciting. So that's, that, that's kind of the first, I would say, of, of the two ways. Uh, the second way is just around, um, you know, the fact that with crypto, money is programmable. 
and when you make money programmable, you can create these systems that have these positive externalities. <coughs> I mentioned how the seller blockchain is buying carbon offset credits programmatically every day. Uh, soon, it will also buy carbon offset credits using 20% of the transaction fee that you spend whenever you sign a transaction, whenever you submit a transaction to the network. We're calling this ultra green money. 80% um, will be burned to make cello deflationary, and then 20% uh, will go towards um, um, buying carbon offset credits programmatically and retiring them. Um, and you can create these systems uh, really easily now um, in smart contracts. Um, and it's not just at the blockchain level, but you know, there's protocols built on top of Celo that are doing similar things. Um, and you can create these really nice systems that can actually have this positive impact. Mm. That's really nice. <laughs> I was listening to, to your talk uh, sitting there. Um, it, something caught me. Um, you talked about Sylvie, mm -hmm. um, tree planting um, the idea, right? Now, um, I'm at, at the moment also working as a special envoy for uh, UNFCCC. Um, they're, they're calling me uh, Al Gore Avata. Al Gore is too expensive to, <laughs> to invite. So they're saying you're cheap, so you can, we can just send it. Don't so, sell yourself short. <laughs> so whenever, whenever they have a meeting someplace in the world, um, well, as long as I have time, they sent me an air ticket, then I go and give a talk, how, a talk on how important uh, climate change. But surprising me, surprised to their, them, I guess, in a way, I, right from the beginning, I've been talking about biodiversity rather than climate change. It's because, in my opinion, climate change is, is very important, very serious, but I think biodiversity loss is going to be even more immediate, even more immediate threat to us. Temperature goes up. There are a lot of things will happen. But we have a technology of uh, air conditioning and what, things like that. We may be able to escape to a certain extent. But then those plants and animals out there without that technology will, will start disappearing. We've been worrying <clears throat> when IPCC has been talking about uh, stopping temperature rise up to two degrees Celsius. We've been worrying, the biologists worried about, uh, worried that that, that, uh, that goal is too, 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 too big in a way because when you when, when you have a two degree, two Celsius, two degree Celsius increase in world temperature, we, we worry that nearly half of biodiversity will disappear. When half of the entire world biodiversity disappear, would human, be, human species survive? We don't think so. So we, we were trying to encourage people to come up with this uh, agreement and whatnot. So we're trying very hard to reduce the, the level of uh, <clears throat> temperature rise and all this, but then not many people are paying attention to biodiversity loss. Mm. And in, in my opinion, that's something you, sh you guys should now from, should look into. Um, with, Climate change, maybe the tackling the climate change may be, may be easier compared to biodiversity issue because you, you have a measure, clear measure, emission level and whatnot. But for biodiversity, what do you have to do? Do we have to go and find out uh, how many species are still, still surviving or whatnot? It's going to be very difficult in terms of measuring the, the change in a way. And I wonder, I mean, you, you talked about earlier to me that there are people in the world taking samples of uh, soil and plants and whatnot and 
cataloging that, that uh, genetic material in, in a way. That's, in my opinion, very important thing. But how would, uh, again, once again, blockchain, all this Web3 business could help that kind of activity? Yeah, exactly. And so we were backstage earlier and we were chatting about Simplex DNA, which is a, a, a project that is, is actually doing exactly that. They're using a token economic system to incentivize people to go out into the world, go out into remote parts of the world to, to collect uh, soil samples, to collect water samples, and then send those samples to uh, labs so that they can be sequenced uh, so that we can create a catalog of all of the DNA, all of the species uh, that exist today on the planet. Uh, and they're doing it using, using, you know, they're trying to do a big ambitious thing and they're trying to get a lot of people to coordinate together to solve that big ambitious thing. Uh, and again, they see crypto as, as an amazing enabler to, to pull that off. Um, and so it's really exciting to see them uh, be working on this. Um, and absolutely, I think it's, it's, it's really important. Uh, the tree planting protocols, I think, are also really interesting. And I know that Sylvie is, is also really thinking a lot about biodiversity. Um, and, you know, uh, the founder of Sylvie actually uh, had this really interesting statement. He said that, you know, there's this goal uh, that's frequently talked about how if we, if we were to plant a trillion trees, uh, it would have a huge impact on, on climate change. And if you think about it, a trillion trees is actually not that many trees per person. Uh, it, you know, it comes out to, you know, planting, for example, two trees a year per person um, throughout your life. Um, and when you break it down that way, suddenly it seems actually quite manageable. Um, but how do you incentivize everyone to, to plant two trees a year? Um, especially if you're talking about everyone, you're talking about reaching people who may not have bank accounts who may not have government recognized IDs, right? Suddenly crypto is actually a really appealing um, platform for, you know, trying to do something that big and ambitious. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's 100% possible. And, and again, I think this is the kind of thing that is really made for Web3. Um, and uh, I think we're going to see a lot more of that in the future. I have, um, <clears throat> I have a good news to share with you. Um, <clears throat> one of the Korean uh, K-pop companies called SM. The founder of SM, Mr. Yi Suman, uh, is, uh, is, is having quite laudable idea. He wants to mobilize uh, K-pop fans uh, worldwide to uh, plant trees together. So he asked me to help, help out. So I'm going to uh, go to that event uh, sometime later this, this month to talk about um, you know, how we could go about doing that. And I, I, I'm, I am quite excited because you, you think about the fans of K-pop, that, that's huge. And that's they like the all whole, get That's together. like the whole population of the world, right? That's <laughs> everyone. <laughs> and so I asked uh, Jane Goodall to, to help us out too. So Jane Goodall uh, already made a small short recording and asking uh, the young people to join this uh, movement. Um, so again, if we could uh, use um, that uh, blockchain technology to somehow keep, keep records for individuals about as, as, uh, as they plant trees, that would, be, that would be something we could do. Wonderful. Yeah, that's fascinating. You could imagine giving, giving folks NFTs, giving folks tokens as an incentive, uh, but also even just as a memento to remember the action that they took um, and maybe even somehow uh, tie it back to the individual tree itself. That's really cool. Huh. Right. But then, let me, let me <laughs> ask you some, some, <clears throat> some uh, question that might be quite unsettling. As I understand uh, this uh, AI business, all this, uh, the internet businesses, it seems in the last few years, something comes up, then everybody gets so excited and then in a, in a couple of years, that somehow slowly disappears from, 
from uh, everybody's uh, talking surrounding in a way. Technology like blockchain or Web3, are, are they really sustainable? Will they be around in 10 more years, 20 more years, 100 more years? Yeah, it's a great question, and it's, it's an interesting question, actually, uh, because it's almost, uh, if you think about these systems, it's, it's almost a, a tautological question, because in a way, they're designed to actually survive. Um, so much work goes into thinking about how to make these systems resilient against everything so that they do survive, and so that when you do put something on the chain, when you do get an NFT for planting that tree, you know, you have that record forever. Um, and so I think absolutely, I think that's like part of what makes Web3 interesting is the fact that so much thought goes into solving exactly that. Uh, and when it comes to developer interest, you know, um, we're in a bear market, uh, certainly, but um, I don't know about you, but every time I go to a crypto conference, especially the builder focused ones, the amount of energy, the amount of people that I see, you know, it's unlike anything that we've ever seen before. Uh, if you look at the, the metrics that you know, folks like Electric Capital put out, year over year, we're still increasing the uh, number of developers that are coming into the ecosystem and contributing. So I'm, I'm really excited. I'm definitely very bullish. Well, for that matter, I, I am um, quite mad at my, my own government, Korean government. We are highly technological nation. We're probably, you know, moving faster than any other countries. But then all of a sudden, Korean government is crashing down on, on this uh, blockchain technology. I don't, I don't quite understand their, their logic. They're worried. I don't know. I, I understand they're worrying about some bad effects of this technology. But there are, that's, not, that's not the only part you guys are having, right? There are, there are a lot of great things you can do using this technology. Yeah, and I, I guess I could, I could uh, empathize certainly with the desire uh, to um, limit the, the speculative parts of crypto because I think um, uh, it's certainly easy to, to see you know, the negatives there, but um, what gets me excited about crypto is all of the you know incredible things that, that we're building that weren't possible before. Um, you know, we talked about protocols that plant trees. There's also protocols that incentivize the collection of plastics. There's stable coins that are actually being created that are backed in part by trees, so that you can have a positive effect on climate change simply by using one stable coin over another. Um, you know, we talked about protocols preserving biodiversity. Uh, there's so much exciting stuff happening. Um, even on the carbon offset uh, credit side of things, uh, there's a whole industry now that's tokenizing carbon offset credits and creating new mechanisms for uh, effectively solving some of the issues with the voluntary carbon offset market that exists today. Um, and we need to solve these issues because if you look at the projections, you know, McKinsey is projecting that the market will grow by 15x uh, by the end of the decade in seven years. That's a crazy amount of demand for carbon offset credits uh, that will land uh, on, the, on our doorstep. Um, and the current systems um, don't scale, they don't have enough price transparency, they don't have enough transparency as to what you're buying. There's issues with double sp spending or double retirement, uh, which is something that crypto is, is really well versed at solving. And so there's all of these problems that, that crypto can solve uh, that create real value um, to people today and you know, certainly to the environment tomorrow. Um, and, and I think um, you know, that's definitely what gets me excited about the, about the space. I remain optimistic because I study ants and uh, unlike most other, most uh, people believe ant society is completely decentralized society. Queen doesn't have complete control over things going on in that society. Worker ants themselves n somehow controlled everything in that society and 
blockchain technology being the, 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 the core concept of blockchain technology, as I understand, is decentralization. And that's where I, I have a hope you guys will somehow figure out what to do. <laughs> wow. What a nice thing to end on. There you have it. Ants and colonies are decentralized just like crypto. That's fascinating. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. It was thank really you. a pleasure. It's fun. Yeah.